Kuzongpo and a very warm welcome to our weekly news magazine program Bhutan This Week. I am Pemal Hadden. In our top stories this week, His Majesty the King celebrates Chungipai Loser in Samdup Songkhor. His Holiness the Jay Kempo appoints Kudung and Akempo. And Captive Breeding Center for White Bellet Heroin to be established. His Majesty the King celebrated this Chungipai Loser with the people of East in Samdup Songkhar. His Majesty granted Losar Toha to the people who have come from around the region to celebrate the day with His Majesty. <laughs> the celebrations included archery, various entertainment programs and traditional singing and dancing. <laughs> People received Sura prizes as part of a lucky draw. His Majesty is accompanied by His Royal Highness Gelsab Jimmy Doji Wachu. I'm very happy. This is my first time with His Majesty and I pray for more of such moments. <laughs> His Majesty has always been selfless and this year His Majesty celebrated the day with us. I will never forget this day in my lifetime. I feel blessed for celebrating the Losa with His Majesty. I pray for the same in my next life as well. People across the country also celebrated the national holiday, feasting with families and indulging in traditional games and sports. The traditional day of offering is celebrated on the first day of the 12th Bhutanese month every year to thank and make offerings to Shabdu Ngawan Namgil. It dates back to the 17th century. Pa <laughs> His Holiness the Jekempo appointed five Kudung or the Master of Discipline and a Kempo. As is the tradition, the Kudung for Shah, Soche, Paro, and Senge are appointed every year coinciding with the traditional day of offering. His Holiness, who is in Tashigang, appointed Chair of Funso as the new Kembo of Kangrung Shetra, the monastic school where he was serving as a teacher. The 40-year-old from Tashiyangsi joined the monk body at the age of 13 years. Lobzang Tashi from Tashigang will now serve as the Kudung of Tashigang Rabde. Before assuming the current post, the 25-year-old was in the same Rabde as one of its teachers. In Punaka, on behalf of His Holiness, Doji Lobi of the Central Monastic Body appointed Kudus for Shah, Soche, Paro and Tsengi this morning. 42-year-old Gomchen Sring from Punaka is the new Kudu Shah. Prior to his current appointment, he served as the Utsi Gyeongbikanjup in Pontem Drasang. He joined the Drasang at the age of 9 years and completed his studies from Talo Shetra. Kilet Sring from Thimpu has been appointed as Kudu Soche. He started his monastic education when he was 13 years old. He previously served as the principal of Deshin Podrang Monastic School in Thimpo. Pema String will now serve as Kuduparup. He joined the Pontem Drasang at the age of 11 years. Before assuming the post of Kuduparup, he was a teacher at the Pontem Drasang. For Tsengi Kudu, 39-year-old Tandin String has been appointed the post after his completion of nine years of retreat. He joined the monastic body when he was 15 years of age. With additional reporting from Sonam Darge in Kangrung, Choni Dama for BBS News.
over 130 priests are presiding over a five-day religious ceremony, Akhanda Mahayagya, at the Shivalaya Mandir in Samsi. It is to commemorate the first birth anniversary of His Royal Highness the Gese. The religious ceremony, some priests say, is being performed for the first time in the country. The prayer ceremony started with the reception of the Information and Communications Minister, D.N. Thungyel, who is also one of the coordinators of the program. The minister distributed new robes to the priests to perform the prayer. The priests from across the country, along with over a hundred girls, were then escorted to Dhamdum River to collect water as a part of the ceremony's inaugural. Nachi Nangbe Chena Bewajin Dupchin Bedo Jumji Bedebe Benigi Lerimji Ije Juni D Lerim D Nachi Gese Akanta Mahayagya is like Dupchen in Buddhism. So this religious ceremony is for the well-being and long life of His Royal Highness the Gese. On 5th of this month, our Gese will be a year old. So through this ceremony, we the Southern Buddhist community are coming together to celebrate the first birth anniversary of His Royal Highness. Lord Shiva and our royal family are somehow similar. Lord Shiva's family in Hindu is called the Wachu family and in Zonka as well, Shivaji is referred as Lhajan Wachu. Lord Shiva's family lives in peace among themselves. Similarly, people are living in peace and prosperity under the reign of His Majesty. So the Akanta Mahayagya is also performed for continuity of such peace and prosperity in the country. On the first day of the ceremony today, about a hundred devotees attended and received preaching from the priests. The chanting of prayers will continue through day and night till Sunday. Hindu Dharma Samudaya of Bhutan and Lhotsam communities from six Zonkaks are organizing the ceremony. For Dam Chizam in Samsi, this is Sunam Pem for BBS News. The Bhutanese man reported missing in Bangkok since 23rd January was found on Wednesday. He is currently being treated in a police hospital there. According to a local Thai paper, Harka Badur Suba was found unconscious in one of the markets of Tambun Paknam province at around 6 p.m. Locals immediately informed a nearby hospital. Police later identified him as the missing Bhutanese and transferred him to the police hospital. Bhutanese embassy officials in Bangkok say the man is recovering, although he is weak and unable to communicate well at the moment. Prime Minister Tsring Topge in his Facebook post thanked the Royal Thai Police, staff of the Royal Bhutanese Embassy, the media and volunteers for their efforts to locate Harka Badur. The Prime Minister also shared that Harka would be flown back after receiving medical attention. The 39-year-old cook of Tampu Central School was in Bangkok to attend a training along with nine other colleagues. His friends had last seen Harka walk out of the hotel in the early morning hours of 23rd January. They informed the Bhutanese Embassy about the incident on the same day, who then filed a missing case with the Thai police. Nishi Galson, BBS News. People can now transfer money to any accounts maintained with the Bank of Bhutan, Bhutan National Bank and Druk, Punjab National Bank. But a user should be having an account holder in one of these banks. The Royal Monetary Authority launched the Bhutan Immediate Payment Service or BIPS to promote the use of digital payments in the country. The service can be used through mobile phones, internet and ATMs. Customers can do instant interfund transfer between the accounts in these three banks. It will also facilitate payment of grocery and utility bills and government payments reducing cash handling and mismanagement. Currently, Thimbutomdi is the only government agency providing the online payment service under G2C initiatives. Minister for Information and Communications, D.N. Dungel and Indian Ambassador to Bhutan launched the Bhutan Immediate Payment Service today. Due to lack of national interbank immediate fund transfer infrastructure, G2C's online services 
requiring payment component could not be delivered end to end through online means. Moreover, individuals were not able to transact electronically between accounts maintained with different banks. Thus, the citizens at large were not able to get the full benefits of end-to-end -end online services as envisaged. All the apps are available at the respective bank's website and Play Store. It was developed in collaboration with Minister of Information and Communications, Financial Institutions and G2C Office. To take advantage of the existing infrastructure and coverage of mobile services, the Ministry would like to request the Royal Monetary Authority, the telcos and the financial institutions to explore the possibility of making it possible for even the mobile users where citizens can make payments, transfer funds or cash out using their mobile phones without requiring to maintain a bank account. Soon the remaining banks will provide the facility while other government agencies are also expected to provide the online payment service to the citizens. The Bhutan Immediate Payment Service was developed at a cost of 15 million newton and is funded by the Government of India. This is Pasa for BBS News. Bhutan's gross domestic product increased by 13 billion newton in 2015. The growth was driven particularly by the construction and the electricity sector, according to the Royal Monetary Authority's report 2016. GDP is the quantitative measure of nation's economic activity. Amongst the 12 sectors, construction sector is the highest contributor to the GDP. It contributed 1.48% to the total GDP growth rate of 6.5%, followed by electricity and water supply sector at 1.27%. Uh, because of these uh, mega hydro projects uh, that, are, uh, that are in pipeline, and it's uh, on, uh, ongoing projects. So basically, uh, most of the growth contribution came from this uh, hydropower project uh, constructions. And then the other uh, sector that, uh, that has equally contributed to the uh, growth, uh, growth of 6.5% is uh, our electricity. That is basically the power plants uh, and power, uh, power generations. In general, the secondary or the industry sector contributed 3.5%, while the service or the tertiary sector added 2.4% to the current GDP growth rate. The primary or agriculture sector is the least GDP contributor with only 0.6%. Bhutan recorded a steady rise in GDP growth rate after its economic slowdown in 2013. This is Pasa for BBS News. Captive breeding center for the globally threatened white-bellied heroin will be established at Changche in Sirang to increase its population. The center will be an effort towards preserving the critically endangered species in the world. Following the success of a pilot project on captive rearing of white bellet heron in 2011, the species will now be captured, bred and reared at a permanent captive breeding center under special care. Of the total 15 confirmed breeding pairs of white bellet heron in the world, Five breeding pairs are spotted in Bhutan along Pochu, Harorongchu in Wongdi, Burichu in Sirang, and Bertichu in Shemgang. Egg was lifted from the wild nest. The egg was incubated in captivity. The bird was reared in captivity. And after 134 days in captivity, the bird was successfully released in the wild. So it was a successful experiment. So based on that one, we think like since the bird can be reared in captivity and released in the wild, we think like this approach can help us to revive the population in the wild. White bellet heron breeds once a year. They breed on chirpine trees at a height of 15 to 20 meters along the river banks. Although the species was spotted in Bhutan early in 1976 along Pochu, its nest was spotted for the first time in 2003 at Atangyaok in Ongdifodang. Three live nests were spotted in 2016, from which six juveniles hatched. The white bullet heron nest was last sighted in Myanmar in 1929. The captive breeding center will enable conservation and protection of the species by facilitating research, monitoring and habitat restoration. 
Royal Society for Protection of Nature carries out population survey of the species annually since 2003. But there is still no data on breeding, habitat change and lifespan of the heron. We do annual population survey and the actual population, like the total adult population that we find annually is, it remains more or less same, like around 25 to 26 and around 30, the maximum individuals. We don't know whether the juveniles are dying after fledging from the nest or is it the adults they are dying or if they are migrating to some new places. We have initiated the satellite tagging and we have, as an experimental, we tagged two juveniles from Burichu Nest in 2016. Captive Breeding Center is one of the projects under the Royal Society for Protection of Nature's White Ballet Heron Recovery Plan project. The groundbreaking ceremony for the center was held last Friday. The Captive Breeding Center is expected to be complete by 2018 and operational by 2019. Puna Sangchu Hydropower Project is funding the establishment of the breeding center. The center, covering over 18 acres, will cost more than 46 million ngutam. Pup Game for BBS News. The Jigmi Singhi Wangchuk School of Law received an overwhelming number of almost 500 applicants. However, the school in its opening academic session will be able to take in only 25% of class 12 graduate. The school opens from July this year and will groom students for careers at the highest levels of legal profession and public affairs. Regional tourists wishing to visit Bhutan will now be able to obtain their entry permit clearances and route permits before their arrival into the country. The Home Ministry's Department of Immigration, along with the Tourism Council of Bhutan, recently launched the online permit system. Until the construction of the campus in Palm Bisa in Paro is complete, the Jigmi Singh Wangchuk School of Law will function from Daba in Thimpu. This school has a faculty of professional lecturers from within the country and abroad. With limited number of seats, this school is more focused on creating an effective legal fraternity of educated, well-trained and socially responsible professionals. There were some people who uh, wanted more intake, uh, but we did a little bit of research in terms of what our needs are based on the population. We discussed with the most relevant stakeholders, judiciary, civil service, and the uh, other, other relevant sectors. So therefore, we wanted to start with 25. We would like to take up the discussions with the stakeholders and discuss and decide on the numbers accordingly, whether to increase or decrease or whatever changes required. He added, students will learn through classroom study and practical trainings in legal doctrine, advocacy skills, professional responsibility, legislative processes and other means. The five-year course includes 50 modules. The law school was established through a royal charter on 21st February 2015. It has been primarily set up to uh, impart uh, tertiary level legal education uh, as well as to uh, conduct uh, legal research as per the needs of our country. We intend to uh, impart education that lives up to the expectations and the uh, great work of His Majesty the King uh, during his 34 years uh, reign. Meanwhile, the construction works at Pambisa are in full swing. It will take two more years for the works to complete. For Chetan Zangwa and Lake Kikandu, Sonomongdi, BBS News. The Department of Roads expects to complete the construction of Gelpushing Nganglam Highway by the end of this year. 80% of the works has been achieved so far. The formation cutting from Gelpushing to the confluence of Kuri Konri River, which is a little over 34 kilometers, has been completed. Now, works are underway to blacktop the stretch. From Nganglam towards the confluence, the formation cutting will be complete by April this year. The project was started in the 9th five-year plan. So by 11th five-year plan, we have a directive received from the ministry and the department that we have to wind up the project by 11th five-year plan. So most probably by uh, 2017 end, we are planning to wind up the project. Construction of the 75-kilometer highway began in 2006 and was supposed to be complete by 2013. Officials explained rugged terrain, long rainy seasons and distance exceeding the actual survey length are some of the reasons that held back the work's progress. 5-6 kilometers will be increased. 
with the because initially the estimate was uh, roughly prepared so because there was no access to the to the to the sites because of the rough terrain and because of the very harsh environment so the initial estimate was not that much accurate la. so that because of all those reasons the length has increased la. the government of india is funding the project worth over 1 billion neutron Compiled for Sonam Siring in Mongar, Ishe Gelsen, BBS News. It is a never-ending affair, say the people of Bardogyuk in Shemgang, regarding the construction of a motorable bridge in their community. The delay has been affected Langdurbi and Digalachyuk's the most. Works to construct the bridge over Mangdichu at Rindigang started in 2013. So far, around 60% of the work is complete. For people of Langdorbi, one of the most remote Chiwoks of Bardo, the delay has cost them an exhausting journey for survival. To buy essential items from the nearest town, they have to travel on foot for almost a day. Be it summer or winter, for us, we have to buy essential commodities from Rengdibi. Horses cannot get through the existing suspension with loads, so we have to carry it to get across. The clearing of farm roads to Digala and Kalamti villages are already complete. But it's useless due to the delay in construction of the bridge. And now, left without use, the farm roads are in need of major maintenance. It's a huge loss to the government. The farm roads constructed since 2013 cost the government around 185 million nitum. Moreover, the road to Digala is designed with higher specifications to be used for the upcoming Jamkarchu hydropower project in the Chiwok. Officials from the Department of Roads office in Tingtibi explained the bridge could not be completed on time because its design had to be reworked. This took about a year. With the change, the contractor denied to execute the works at the initial agreed contract amount. However, officials added, they have now negotiated with the contractor and the bridge will be complete by mid of 2018. Until then, for the people of Langdurbi and Digala, it is about continuing to wait, but just a little more. For Pema Samdrup in Shemgang, Dojjama, BBS News. Well, that is all we have for this week. Until next time, goodbye.